In this lesson, we're going to be talking about right triangles again, but about ratios, trig ratios to be exact. So I just want you to practice writing ratios, green to blue. The order matters. So if we're talking jelly beans, green to blue, come over here and look. There is just one green, one green, two, how many blues? There's one, two blues. So the ratio of green to blue jelly beans is one to two. What is the ratio of yellow to the total amount? So first we have to find yellow. One, two, three, four yellows to the total number. So writing ratios, they look like a fraction. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, if I counted that correctly. So ratios look like fractions, but they're comparing two quantities. So the first learning target is just trig ratios, and there's a really easy way to remember it. Um, but before that, just quickly, what we have found with right triangles, and right triangles only, there are ratios that are in proportion. So there's ratios. We can compare sides. And the ratios are always the same. So sine, the sine is opposite over hypotenuse. So if we're talking sine of an angle, it's the ratio of, so if we're talking this angle, it's the ratio of the side opposite to the hypotenuse, opposite over hypotenuse. Cosine, cosine is a trig function that is about the ratio of adjacent compared to the hypotenuse. Adjacent to the hypotenuse. And tangent is a trig function that talks about opposite over adjacent. So here, it's the opposite side over the adjacent side. And an easy way to remember it is Sokatoa. So the Indian name, Sokatoa. Sine, opposite over hypotenuse, cosine, adjacent over hypotenuse, and tangent, opposite over adjacent. Anytime I'm working with trig, I have this right in front of me so I can refer back to it. So the first thing you're going to do with Sokotoa is just find the value, find the value of each trig ratio. So tangent, tangent of z. So first I'm going to find my angle that I'm talking about. Here is Z. Compared to this angle, I then label all of my sides. Here's my right angle, so opposite of that is going to be my hypotenuse. And the one next to Z, next to means adjacent, so this is my adjacent side. And the one across from Z is my opposite. So I found my angle that I was talking about, and I labeled my sides. So now I'm going to start pulling out the ratios. So tangent, toa, opposite, remember order matters, opposite over adjacent. So I come up to my triangle, and I find the opposite side length, which is 9, over the adjacent side length, which is 12. And I can do this easily because I already have them labeled. So opposite over adjacent. And then, of course, I can simplify to 3 fourths or 0.75. So just leave, you can just leave it like this until we get to our next part. Cosine. The cosine, and I know it says cos right here, but it's really cosine. The cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. The c so k part, adjacent over hypotenuse. So you might even want to write adjacent over hypotenuse like this and come back up, find your angle. The one adjacent to it is 12. And the hypotenuse is right here at 15. And again, I can simplify that. 3 goes into 4. 3 goes into 12 4 times. 
and 15 five times, and we could put it in decimal form if we wanted. And then the last one is the sine. So we have cosine, sine, has an E at the end, and tangent. So these are just shortened ways of writing them, so you don't have to write the whole word every time. So the sine of z, here's z, and remember the sine, that's the soa, so ka toa, so opposite over hypotenuse. So I'm going to write that out, opposite over hypotenuse, and I'm going to come back up here, and I'm going to find the opposite, which is 9, over the hypotenuse, which is 15, and I can simplify that to 3 fifths, which is 0.6. So how does this help us? Well, we learned that we can find missing side lengths given the Pythagorean theorem, but this allows us to find missing side lengths, but also find the degree of angle Z. We really only need one of these, tan, cosine, or sine. But you look at your table that I gave you, and there's a way to do this easy on a calculator too, but you look at your table, and for each one of these decimals, you can find. So if we were talking the tan of z, which is 0.75, we could go to the tangent column and go down to the number that is closest to 0.75, and it's this one right here. Now we happen to have three of them because we had all the side lengths. So we, if we were using this one, we could go down the cosine column, the one closest to 0.8, was this one right here. And the same with sine z. Sine z was 0.6, and this is the closest one. So regardless of which ratio you are using, and again, normally you'll just be given one, regardless of the one you're using, it all ends up to be the same angle measure. So Z, in this case, was 37 degrees. Again, most of the time you'll be only given two side lengths, so you'd be able to just use one of the ratios. In this case, we sh showed that even if you were given all three, it would still end up being the same angle measure. As I said, we can also find lengths. If you are just given, instead of given two side lengths, like the Pythagorean theorem, if you're given one side length, and an angle, we can use trig ratios, or SOHCAHTOA, to find a missing length. So let's first start looking at what angle is given to us in labeling our sides. Here's my right triangle, so this is the hypotenuse. The one across from it is the opposite, and the one next to it is the adjacent. So now I know that the two sides I'm talking about are the opposite and the adjacent. So I come back up here to my SOHCAHTOA, or down here, SOHCAHTOA, which one deals with the opposite over the adjacent. We know nothing about H. That's not the one we're trying to find or given. So we have to use O and A, and that would be the tangent. So we are going to do the tangent of 55 degrees equals the opposite, which is x, over the adjacent, which is 5. So now we can use our table to find what is the tangent of 55. So here's 55 degrees, and I'm going to go to the column that is the tangent. So here's 55. If I was talking about sine, I would use this one, cosine this one, but I'm talking tangent. So I want to use 1.4281, and now I have a simple equation that I can solve. I know that it is multiplied, sorry, it's divided by 5, so I have to find what x is by multiplying by 5. So once I do that, I come up with x is approximately... 7.1. And given that this angle was 5, it would make sense 
that it was approximately 7.1. So we set up our ratio. We found the decimal on the, so that ratio on the table, and then we solved for x. Let's do another one like this. Oops, I have, here's my angle that I'm talking about. So I'm going to highlight that and then name my sides. Here's my right angle, so across from that is the hypotenuse. Across from the given angle is the opposite side and the one next to it, so next to it is adjacent. And again, the reason this one is adjacent and not this one is because this one was already named as the hypotenuse. So look at what sides are given to you. We are given 36 for the adjacent. We're trying to find the hypotenuse length. So we're talking A and H. So come up here to your Sokotoa, and it is the cosine. So I'm looking for the cosine. So I'm going to write my ratio. The cosine of 23 equals the adjacent, 36, over the hypotenuse, which is my x. So now I'm going to look at my table. 23, and I'm at the cosine column, so 0 0.9205 equals 36 over x. Now here, be careful, it's not x over 36. We can't multiply both by 36. We actually have to multiply both by x. So now I have 0.9205x equals 36. And to solve, you have to divide by 0 0.9205. Whoops, I lost my two, zero, five. So I ended up with x is approximately 39.1. So I'm going to come back up here. Does that make sense? Here's the 36. We knew that the hypotenuse had to be longer than that. So my answer is 36.1 meters. And again, that's an approximate. I do hope you're enjoying the tech ed banging better than my dogs or worse. Let me know. All right, a word, one word problem. A plane is 1.5 miles above the ground, so right here, and it's beginning its final approach to the airport. The ground distance from the plane, here's the plane, the ground distance is 20 miles. What is the angle of descent? The angle of descent is actually is this one right here, but we, what we know about parallel lines is these are alternate interior angles. So this one is the same. So we're really looking for this angle. So I'm going to color that in and I'm going to label my sides. This is the hypotenuse. This is the adjacent because it's next to it and this is the opposite. So now I'm going to see which one deals with opposite and adjacent. Right here, tangent. Now I'm looking at the tangent of, and we don't know what our angle measure is. That's what we're looking for. So we are going to set up our ratio of opposite to adjacent. Opposite is 1.5 to 20 and we need it in decimal form to be able to read our table. So do 1.5 divided by 20 and it gives us approx well, exactly 0 0.075. So again, I'm looking at my tangent column, which one is approximately 0 0.075. So 0 0.075, I have a 0 0.0699 and a 0 0.0875. You're always just going to choose the closer one. So we know it's between 4 degrees and 5 degrees, but it's okay to round to the nearest degree. So this one was closer. So you come across and it's going to be this angle measure. So this angle or this angle is approximately 4 degrees. We know it's a little bit bigger than 4 degrees.